Looks like it's starting. It is. The recording has commenced. Daniel, I'd like to avoid some legal snags by telling you that you're being recorded and I can uh, use this in a court of law against you when that time does come. I didn't say if, I said when. So on that day, I'm I not showing sure. everything I'm against you. I'm not showing up to the court date. Um, oh, all right. I'm just not showing up. So. You already know that you're busy that day. Got yeah, it. I have a dentist appointment. Got um, it. You know, I got things to do. Crentis, so. the dentist. I know. I Crent- know the whole <laughs> thing. I know. What a coincidence. His name is Crentis. That's why he became I a dentist. I love the way Steve Carell delivers that line. He goes, your dentist's name is Crentis? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. That's the best. All right, well, here we are, episode 57. I'm Tim here with Daniel. We don't know where Derek is. He might be dead. So if we find out he's dead, I'm going to feel real bad for saying he, that. He went to the dentist, and it's two hours away, or oh, four God. hours away, right? Yeah, so. well, you know those 11 p.m. dentist appointments. Those are very yeah. common. I mean, it's Florida, right? They are, all sorts of places are open late in Florida. So It's very common. It's fine. But, hey, we're going to carry on, and hopefully he'll be able to join us, if not tonight, if he's uh, not able to make it. And hopefully by next week. You guys will be able to uh, indulge in the bad teak takes yet again. I'll I'll give some. I mean, I'll I'll figure it out. I can just say trash and tell everyone's opinions that they're wrong. Uh, Gaston, uh, Crash Bandicoot's fucking stupid. So stop talking about it because I'm sick of your shit. So that's one place to start. And he also <laughs> needs to talk about ponies. He's really mad at all ponies. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Although I don't necessarily know. We need we need him here to define what's a pony. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, what uh, makes a another word is equestrian, right? True. That's what yes. Throw out there with ponies. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Sea biscuit. That's another word. <laughs> I'm thinking, of, I don't know, horse words. <laughs> Remember that Tobey Maguire movie? That is something that I don't think people spend a lot of time sitting around. I got to think of some horse words. Yeah, All horse right. Words. Well. We're going to do our best to carry on. There are a few headlines to cover, some stuff that we've been playing. And then Dan's got... Oh, here comes the loud car. Hang on. Did you hear that? Got that Tokyo Drift going on outside. Yeah, did you hear that? I might close this window here in a minute. (laughs) I mean, I heard it, but I'm... you know. Unless they're doing like loop de loops around your yard, there like it's been ridiculously nice here. Yesterday and today was even nicer. And so this evening, now that the sun's ducked down behind the the mountains the temperature dropped like 20 degrees so it was like high 70s and now really? it's like mid 50s and breezy and it's just perfect yeah it's so peculiar when you get like good weather and then like texas had like that crazy storm that like decimated half the state like yeah and it's been like 30 degrees the past few days here like or the past yeah. couple of days like Colorado weather is interesting cuz it really truly is sunny we were just talking to some friends about this tonight it's uh sunny roughly 300 days out of the year you'll get a lot of sunshine Mm. now in the summertime it might be like an afternoon storm blows through and it's pretty rough for like 45 minutes to an hour but then it's sunny again right after that so um yeah the weather here is pretty fantastic Uh, some people would prefer to be near a you know near coastline or whatever or they prefer something with more humidity they don't like a lot of Mm. arid temperatures but i love it without the humidity out here it's fantastic so Kind of yeah. sounds like Hawaii. Like Hawaii would be like raining for five minutes and then it doesn't rain for two hours and then rains again. And then, you know, 18 hours, it doesn't rain. And then it rains for five hours. Like it's just it, they're basically the weather. Like when they try to be like predict the weather there, it's like almost impossible. Cause yeah, it's, just, it's a lesser yeah. crazy version of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the weather is coming over the mountains. And so sometimes it hits the way they predict and sometimes it scoops up to the north and we end up getting nothing. Yeah. So it, just, it just depends. But. Yeah, today's been great, uh, and so it's that's why I've got the window open because the breeze is fantastic. Um, but anyway, what I was gonna say was I think Dan said he's got some sort of activity, let's call it, for uh, us as well. So we'll do some headlines uh, first, and then we'll yes. see if he wants to do that yeah. or not. Read, read through the headlines because I need I need one more item for my little thing here. So no problem. We don't have a ton of headlines. I mean, there are a few. I think most people can agree that april fool's day is one of the worst days for trying to get any kind of serious news on any topic sure everyone's just posting fake stuff and everyone's trying to be funny and one up each other and um sometimes it's funny and i appreciate it and a lot of times it's it's just annoying it must be trump's favorite day all the fake news right 
Oh, it's got to be his favorite. Yeah, it's got to be his favorite. It's got to yeah. be his favorite. Just point, he can point in any direction. He's like, fake news. It's like, yeah, no, you're right. Absolutely. Today, you're actually correct. <laughs> <laughs> so usually, Out of all the days. <laughs> so usually I don't like this, but I did really enjoy this one thing that unfolded over the last week. So there was a fake Halo account mm-hmm. that posted, uh, and I think it was actually the day before April Fool's Day this happened, but they posted about a big delay with it looked very official. There was like a note that was kind of written the same way a dev might write a letter to fans. You know, we want to make the best game possible. And it was it sounded and looked very legit. And it was talking about how they're delaying it to summer 2022 or something like that. I saw that like as I was scrolling through and I, I obviously thought it was legit because it was one of those it like it had like, kind of the borders and it was like yeah. a nice official looking thing. So I was like, oh, OK, well, you know, LOL sarcastically for two seconds and then i kept yeah. it moving right because it's like you know games get delayed it's fine right and but, from what we know. saw from halo infinite it seemed like they are gonna pretty much start this thing over but maybe not yeah anyway uh so that went out and to, to this person's credit i'm about to make fun of someone who writes for kotaku but to this guy's credit a lot of folks dan used to mention yourself and i'll admit for myself too when he first saw it thought oh this is real yeah but Upon closer inspection, it didn't take much to look a little closer and see that the Twitter handle that was being used to tweet this out was totally not real. And if you go to the actual real Xbox or Microsoft or Halo or any of the other official Twitter um, profiles, Mm -hmm. none of them have this anywhere. Okay. So it only took like, you know, less than 60 seconds of sleuthing to figure out like this was not real. So, but... The good folks over at Kotaku, they don't bother with all that sleuthing and sourcing <laughs> business. No. no need to do that because I could just see a tweet and then write up an article as a big headline announcement. And so they did about how Halo Infinite has been delayed to 2022 and they put pu- and they published it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then they had, to, of course, like I went back and looked at the article and then they actually put a little subtitle that says update. We got got. And they actually oh, yeah. admit that, like, you know, we believed been, something that we had. should. Yeah, yeah, and so and they, they uh, they kind of you could tell they were trying to be lighthearted about it, but also were kind of embarrassed, and so I, well, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, the general public does that all the time. People read a headline and then they they repeat like what the headline is as like, oh, well, this is a thing that happened. It's like you didn't even read the information, you Correct. idiot. Which is like Correct. a lot of people on the internet on social media, and then well, that, like, this that's why that one post thing. about forced vacations works so well have you seen that one where people no. are like i 100 percent am behind the government instituting forced vacations and then it's like and that word is kind of in the middle of a big paragraph and mm. as you scan over it your mind sees vaccinations because you see government and you see forced and you just think okay. vaccination <laughs> so without fail you post that and you'll get a couple of hardcore folks who skim it and angrily respond like i can't believe you would let the government force you to do you know there's <laughs> it works fantastically so uh, uh the, the the people at kotaku are just like any other human beings where yeah. they can quickly see something think it's real and and go with it but but i don't ever claim to be a reputable news right. source right so um i if i post something like that and then feel stupid that's one thing that's just me feeling like a dope for a little while but this is a publication that pays someone to write the news. So. Exactly. We're anyway. not getting paid to do this. We do this for fun. We do. That's exactly. their job. And we're wrong so. all the time. No, so well, anyway. I mean, no, that's come on. You're wrong. Well, we're now. wrong, we're our, right we're wrong all the time. game of the year list. You know that, right? Number one <laughs> yeah. should have been Final Fantasy. But well, sorry. yeah, that's actually true. But that's yeah. fine, Tim. You don't have to um, open up old wounds. So they printed it as a headline and, of course, doubled back on it to their credit. But I was curious who this author was. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't recognize the name. His name is Ari or something like that. So I clicked on other stuff he's written. And this is the guy who wrote an article about Monster Hunter Rise okay. that got a lot of criticism because basically he writes and criticizes it for being really tough to get into, even for new players, despite it being the most accessible one yet. And then he describes his experience where he goes on to admit that he skipped all the tutorials didn't do any of the opening beginner quests, mm-hmm. jumped right in to try to do multiplayer, some of the more challenging quests where they weren't geared up for it, and criticized the game for not letting him, for not being good for a newcomer. 
also talked about how as he's traveling, his sidekicks, his Palico and Palamute, started attacking these small creatures, which you can attack to get resources and stuff. Yeah. And, and they were doing nothing but peacefully eating the grass, and now he feels guilty that his creatures did that, and now he had to put them down. <laughs> and so he's the same guy who wrote this. So I'm already annoyed at just the very essence of the way this guy approaches video games at all. Right. And then to see him just botch this headline, it's a li- I, I gotta be honest, a little satisfying to see him look like an absolute idiot because that Monster Hunter article, you should go read it. It's really annoying. Yeah. Uh, even if you've never played Monster Hunter, you could read it and be like, wow, you didn't do this right at all and you're blaming the game. This is hilarious. So he was being legitimate. He wasn't like being, it wasn't a joke, sarcasm, nope. no? Nope, he's got issues with Monster Hunter Rise, several of them. One not, And one of them is, I feel guilty that I was forced to kill these innocent animals who were just minding their own business. I mean, the game... <laughs> It's the game called, is called Monster Hunter. <laughs> the second word is called Hunter. <laughs> what do you think that means? Oh my gosh. Ugh. Also, one of the other pieces that he wrote, and I'll, I'll end this headline with this, because I've recently been playing through a little bit of that game Maquette that came out on PlayStation okay. Plus. It's like a yeah, yeah. first-person, slightly puzzle game, but mostly just a walking simulator where you hear a, a love story. Okay. Super boring for most folks. I'll put myself in that box at this so point. So Derek I, would love it. No, I mean, I don't even like it. And usually I can get into these kinds of games sometimes. Mm But um, yeah, this one was not doing it for me. And the puzzle aspect was hilariously weak. Like the I made like half half of the game and the puzzles are not fun. They're not intuitive and they're not satisfying. Like when you play a puzzle game, you want that moment where it clicks to be like, oh, that was awesome the way they did that. Like you want there to be a that little adrenaline rush of I solved this. That's what makes a good puzzle game good. This yeah, exactly. puzzle doesn't have that. It's just weird environmental stuff. It doesn't really do a good job of guiding you to it, and it's not that fun when you do figure it out. So, is that the one that had that initial trailer where, like, like they're in a room and they sort of like almost like kind of rotated the perspective of the room, which then like the way it, that it turned like had an yes. opening, so that okay. uh, I think so. Okay, there was another one called Super Liminal that did some weird perspective stuff. Okay, um, but. This one does some puzzles w- with like a size mechanic. So like, okay. there's one one main area early on in the game where you there's a, there's four exits. So it's kind of like a square shape, and there's four exits on each side. And in the middle, there's kind of like a a um, a small version of the area that you're in with each of the four sides. So let's say you find a key, but it's way too big. You put it down in the small area, and then you turn around in real life, and it's actually there. But now it's much smaller because of right. where you've placed it. So I, I think that's what it was. Yeah, there's some interesting mechanics there. But once I figured out what they wanted me to do, I was like, "Oh, this is actually kind of not fun." Um, well, also so, if you keep like going back to that one mechanic, it's like then that's just what it, the game. It's just that one thing, and there isn't a variety. Not like the witness. I've never played the witness, but I've heard it's... No, no, no. The witness, which I know. have, I have done my fair share of bashing the witness, but I mainly bash it because it gets so much love as being like a game of the year or whatever yeah. from some folks. Yeah. And I think that's all way overdone. But The Witness is a very solid puzzle game. Like their puzzle mechanics are very smart and very yeah. interesting. Um, it's just not for everybody. Yeah, this yeah. one is just not. I don't think it's a good puzzle game at its core. It's just not a good puzzle game. Maybe yeah. the story is interesting, but I bring that game up because the same author who got fooled by a fake Halo account, who doesn't <laughs> know how to play a video game uh, like Monster Hunter Rise, he can't figure it out um, because he refuses to do tutorials and play it the right way. He right. also has a whole piece about how important Maquette is and how everyone needs to play it right now. It's like the most <laughs> important game. So based on I those mean, three examples, I'm like, well, not uh, the biggest fan of this particular yeah. journalist. So, Well, if you can even call him that. <laughs> I used that word with air quotes in my head, at least. But um, yes. yeah. Hey, speaking of Monster Hunter Rise, that game sold 4 million copies in its first weekend, Damn. which is a lot. For some perspective, Monster Hunter World sold five million across the PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. In its first weekend. So and Rise is just on well, Switch. That's sort of the uh the whole thing of like the one comes out and it like is like explodes, so then the next one people have, you know, sort of expectations. So they're like, Yeah, look at uh, Monster Hunter. Like if that was the first Monster Hunter and then they see that that you know, oh Monster Hunter, cool. Let me let me get that one because I really like that other one. It was my first time playing it, so Yep. It, it boosts it up, you know? So Absolutely. 
Yeah. Which is no surprise. I mean, these games are huge. There's a, it's, it already has a built-in hardcore Monster Hunter audience. Mm-hmm. We've talked about this already. We talked about it last week how World really helped reach a broader audience. So now there's a lot more people who are aware of this game. And this game really is kind of the big release of the, of the moment. So everyone's talking about it. All the outlets are talking about it. You know, we are talking about it. So it's just it's kind of like the hot game. And so it's getting a lot of buzz. And I think for good reason. It's really, really excellent. I love it. Um, I, I've played a little bit more, but my both my son and my daughter have now snatched it out of my Switch because I got ah. the cartridge version of it, you know? Sure. And they are playing it on uh, on their consoles more than I am getting to. So I'll talk about what I'm playing instead when I'm Monster Hunterless. So did you and Teague still not um, have a moment to play that together? No, not yet. Still hoping to, though. We tried to this week, but... Um, I got his mess. He he messaged me and Kyle said, "Hey, let's play." I was like, "Sweet, I'll be on in about forty five minutes. Got to get my kids in bed, and I'll be able to play." And then he messaged back and was like, "I'm going to bed. I'm tired." <laughs> yeah, um, that's probably what happened tonight. So he's yeah, just... we're guessing that Teague is asleep tonight too. I think he was outside most of the day with soccer stuff. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm guessing that he's uh, pretty wiped out. You, you know, when you get old, being outside just wears you down. You know, so <laughs> it is very tiring. It's being very, outside. Be, just being outside, being especially outside. in Florida. That humidity, I think, takes like two years off your life. <laughs> yeah, uh, just living there. Yeah. Also, just the the fear of uh, of uh, alligators. That just would the probably fear alone. do it. For, yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, to be honest, yeah, absolutely. Just, I mean, like, for a while, my wife and I, or, I mean, I think she still does too. But like, I, I think especially during this whole COVID thing, like, not to. Because obviously everyone has their opinions, but they 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 were one of the states that very much was like, like nah, like we don't care, like this isn't we're not gonna do anything, like we're just gonna walk around and not care. It's like oh okay, so you guys really are a mess of a state. People have said it for years, like, but yeah, there's a reason why the uh, Florida man meme is a thing. (laughs) Yeah, Florida man. If you had to come face to face in the wild. With an alligator while you're in the water, or a grizzly bear when you're on the open field with no like discernible shelter to immediately run to, which would you prefer <laughs> to be face to face with? Um, <laughs> uh, can I use a cheat code to unlock the infinite uh, ammo weapon of choice? <laughs> nope, it's just you with your phone. All you have I is mean, your phone. <laughs> I feel like the alligator. I feel like maybe a slight better chance with alligator if you can. I mean, how close am I to shore? I mean, in both cases, you got a ways to go. Yeah, I think I think you're after either way, Tim. In this yeah. hypothetical situation that you've put me in, you you monster. Because I, I mean, would like only pick bear, I think, because there's a higher chance of the bear not being interested. And, I mean, and an alligator, I think, is always interested in taking sure. a chomp. Yeah, because the alligator is gonna he's gonna grab you, to... and he's gonna do that rotating thing. Yeah, I think the alligator is gonna go after you 100 percent of the time, or at least like 90. I think the bear it's might maybe a coin flip if he's hungry or not if you're if he feels threatened by you or not like I feel like there's a chance the bear might not come after you yeah because with the bear like yeah if, I mean if he comes after you like I mean you can't climb up into a tree bears climb trees dude yeah um, but or at least the other thing is if you're in an open field you do. can't even use a tree to kind of like break line of sight or break his reach like I would try to use right. trees to kind of like if I could zigzag through him in a way to kind of keep him off me, which I know is probably silly to imagine I could ever do that away from a freaking bear, but they are fast too. They are fast. But if I could maybe maneuver around small areas, cause I'm smaller than him. I don't know. I, I feel like if I'm in a forest, there's a small chance I could maybe get away from him. Probably not a very good one, but, yeah. um, but yeah, definitely not climbing a tree. That's a bad call, but like running through some trees, zigzagging in ways that causes the bear to not be able to run full speed at me all the time. I don't know. Also, they have the uh, the horns, right? Yeah, they usually people who go out into the woods where they're heavily in, uh, uh, infested. I don't know if that infested is not the right word, but I'll just say infested with bears. They usually, yeah. you have to go out there prepared. So yeah. Well, um, if we were on land with the alligator, that's a no brainer because I know gators can run fast, but as soon as you start that exactly. zigzag pattern, they, they I mean, they can't turn. I wonder you know? how legit that is, though. I wonder, like, what is the percent? What is the percentage of that being effective? Is I don't it know. like eighty percent? Is it twenty percent? Is they it should like... do a MythBusters for that if there isn't one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, didn't actually didn't one of those guys pass away, which is a super bummer. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think I think one of the the MythBuster guys did pass away. That is a major bummer. It is. 
Um, this show is a bummer. All right, let's get <laughs> off that. Uh, let's talk about something else that actually is a bummer, but not a real life one, just a video game nerdy one. Uh, so Sony announced that they are taking down the digital stores for the PS3, PSP, and Vita. And I'm going to get Dan's response mm-hmm. here in a second since he's our Sony boy. But I got to be honest, when I first saw this, and I don't remember if maybe I'm just as much of an idiot as this uh, Kotaku guy I'm making fun of. I don't remember if I saw it in a tweet or some you know, not knowledgeable person was commenting on it or if I misread it. My, I don't know what it was, but for some reason I saw it and I saw some cle- what I thought was a clear description saying, yeah, you better download everything you have because that also won't be accessible to you anymore. Yeah. So then I was like, that is awful. Because then now it's kind of putting this fear in the hearts of all of us who are going digital that your library is temporary. So whatever you buy is essentially a long-term rental. Because as soon as it, so that's how I was thinking of it. Mm-hmm. And for a couple of days, I was like, "Yep, that's what they're doing." Um, thankfully, they put Sony put out an official statement, really clearly laying out here's what's going to happen on these dates. So on July second, the PS3 and PSP digital stores will close, and on August twenty seventh, the Vita digital store will close. And here's what the support blog says. Customers will still be able to re-download and play previously purchased games and video and still redeem games from PlayStation Plus vouchers. So this is even after those dates. You'll be able to re-download stuff you've purchased before. You'll be able to redeem vouchers that you might have. If you've got some card that was for a specific game or movie or something, you can still redeem that. However, you can no longer purchase something new. So if you want to go on there and buy some PS1 classic you've always had your eye on or waiting for a sale, you might want to do that before these dates. Like if on your Vita, like I use my Vita as my PS1 classic machine, basically. That's where I have a bunch of my PS1 digital downloads. Um, I know I could have played them also, I think, on a PS3, right? Can't you play PS1 classics on a PS3? Yeah, Um, yeah. But I don't don't own one of those. Um, So anyway, um, so it's good for me to know that I can always, on my Vita since I have very limited storage space on there because of the stupid proprietary cards they used, um, I, I can always I can still go in and swap my PS1 classics that I have downloaded at a time, which I have done over the years. You know, I've mm-hmm. downloaded Sleek Good N2 and gotten rid of you know Final Fantasy or vice versa, depending on what I want to play. Yeah. So that, to me, is all good news. Um, in-game purchases, PSN wallet funds you might have, you can no longer redeem on those stores. So it's... To me, it makes a lot more sense now in terms of like the boundaries they're putting up. What doesn't make sense, and I'm curious about your take on this, is why they're doing this in the first place. But go ahead. Right. What, are, what are your thoughts on this? Well, we, we started to talk about it before we started recording, and I said, I will save my fury <laughs> for when I see that red circle saying it's recording time. Um, <laughs> I mean, People so, need to hear. <laughs> they need to hear my words. Um, so obviously, like, I'm not an expert on, you know, the cost of running servers where all of this is stored. I mean, it's taking up space somewhere, right? It's, it's it, digital information. It's taken up space somewhere that has to be maintained. Um, so it's costing money. And obviously, you know, they're a business and they're looking at the monies and they're saying, well, is it worth keeping it up? Are we making, is there enough money coming in from keeping all of this up? At, 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 you know, to make it worth just leaving it there. And I'm I'm going to guess, you know, the the penny pinchers were like, nope, got to shut it off. Time, it's it got to shut it off. Um, so it's like, the main thing is like, how, how much money were they losing to just leave this on? Right. Was it worth keeping it up to, even if they were losing a little bit of money, was, is it worth just keeping it up because it's... It, uh, What's the word that I had used earlier? Um, you know, you have all these games, these this catalog of games, this history of games that it's hard to get physically. You know, you gotta you gotta maintain the history of these games. You gotta have them somewhere. It's important, you know. Yeah. To, like to be able to access. Right? Yeah, preservation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, game preservation is important. I mean, otherwise, like people are just still gonna find a way. Anyways, they're gonna do emulators and ROMs, and and then Sony's gonna come at them like, you can't do that. It's like, well, but you took it away from me. Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like, yeah. I want to play these games. Uh, you want me to go on eBay and like, you know, freaking try to look for actual physical? Like, no, just I don't know. It's it's really dumb. I mean, unless they were use, uh, losing crazy amounts of money, but I I doubt it was crazy amounts. Like it. Maybe they were losing something, probably were losing money, but like I, I, 
you know, you're getting that money from all these other places. Like, it's fine. Like, you're really just hurting the customer in the long run and, and everybody else that, you know, cares about game preservation. And people, everyone should care about that. It's important. So. Yeah, I got you. I feel like um, it's probably not going to affect most people very much because you'll be able to download stuff you already downloaded. I don't think there were many people still using, uh, especially the PS3 store, because there's been two consoles that have released since then that have a Sony store. The only thing there is, I think it's those PS1 classics that you can't play elsewhere, right? I don't think they're anywhere else. I could be wrong. Um, yeah, no, it just... Yeah, the Vita, PSP, PS3. Yeah, I mean... So PS... to me, that's that's one of the big things is the PS1 classics. Because you can play a lot of PS2 stuff through PlayStation Now would be their argument. Would be you got PlayStation Now if you want to do PS2 but it's not and even that PS3 many, games. You're right. It's not that many. Yeah. Um, and the PS2 library is massive, of course. So, um, so yeah, I think those – I think that's a – I think it's an issue. I just don't think it's going to be for that many people. My guess is that they were losing money based on the number of customers that they had returning to the stores. And they probably were tracking activity to see most people are just coming here to re-download stuff they've already bought. We're not getting a lot of purchases here. So that's my guess is that it's shutting down the purchase portion and leaving up the downloadable portion. But to your point, that means you can no longer buy stuff that was just on Vita, PSP, or PS3, and is nowhere else. Like that's that's actually going to be gone unless you've already purchased it. So I don't like that. I, I mean, it's it's not as egregious as plenty of the stuff that Nintendo has done. Like I, I'll talk about Nintendo in a second. They've done way worse, but it is kind of confusing because, like you said, unless there's something we're not thinking of, keeping something like this up and running, keeping even just a very basic stripped down version of their store. Yeah. wouldn't cost much. Like if they had to do an update, say we're updating our stores, we're simplifying them, we're going to leave the ability to purchase, you know, these types of games or software up or removing the ability. We're not going to keep updating like a Netflix app or whatever it is they wanted to say. We're going to strip yeah. away some of the extras and just focus in on the games that you could have gotten here. I think that could have been a nice half step. I got a large, a, I mean, a loud motorcycle coming again. <laughs> Listen to that. Jeez. Yeah, uh, we awesome. live right near a, a busy road, and since it's so nice out, everyone's like, finally, I can ride my motorcycle. So they're Finally, I can drive 80 miles an hour down the road. <laughs> Dude, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, um, but anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to say that it's – I don't think it's necessarily a no-brainer, good or bad. I just think it just kind of sucks. So if Sony just decided to do this on a whim, which they could have – like, hey, I'm, we're tired of updating this. You know, let's, we're trying to get our teams to focus on other things. I don't want to keep wasting our technical teams on supporting these, these stores. Okay, it's still kind of, it feels like a very um, so, non-consumer friendly move. Absolutely. But if it's truly draining resources, whether it's money or personnel, then I would be like, yeah, I get it. Like, if you have to trim somewhere, that's a good place to trim. But, um, I mean, again, we don't know the deep intricacies of that, but I think we know it's not it's not that it, there's not that much bad going on with that that this had to I mean look what Microsoft does like I mean since the last generation I mean they they really like fully backed backwards compatibility and like people have like mm -hmm. praised them for it like I I mean I I praise them it's I think that's great I think it's important like yeah, a lot of people say, oh, man, I would love to play that, like, game from, like, 20 years ago, and then, like, you get the ability to do so, and, like, then half of those people, like, they just never get around to it. But, like, still having the ability to do so yeah. is, is important. And, I mean, un unless they're doing something where all of this is carrying over, like, because obviously when the PS5 was coming out, people were wondering, like, so is this going to be all the way backwards compatible? Like that, that was kind of like there was that inkling and then that didn't actually happen except for PS4. Right. So if there's going to be like, for sure, they're doing it in like increments where they're like, all right, so PS3 is next. Or maybe they skip PS3 because that seems to be the hardest apparently because of the, the cell processor. Right. Um, so they go to PS2 and PS1. So like they kind of do increments of like, all right, now all PS2 games work. Now all PS1 games work. Mm -hmm. Then cool. But, like, they're not announcing that right now. They're just saying, yeah, we're just shutting this right. off. You're done. Like, too bad. Yeah, they, they aren't doing a great job of reassuring us. And I think I, I think 
the more I read about it and then after reading the statement from the support blog, I feel less concerned. Like I'll be able to still access stuff I bought. Maybe this yeah. summer I'll go on a little splurge and buy a few more things on the Vita store before it totally goes away. Um, there's a few games like Fat Princess and stuff like that that I don't think has been brought over anywhere else. So there yeah. are a few of those games that are pretty popular that yeah. are, are, are not elsewhere just yet. But um, So I might go on a little bit of a splurge. But it's Nintendo that I think has really done done a lot of gamers dirty in this area. So, like, think about the Wii. That was really the first time that I built up a digital library of any kind. And it was mm-hmm. mostly through their virtual console. You know, I bought a bunch of N64 and Super Nintendo and even Turbo Graphics and Sega Genesis games. And it was just the first thing of its kind where you're shopping on an online store, you hit purchase, and then it just downloads and boom, you play it. It was so cool. Yeah. And, of course, the Wii was a huge hit. And that lasted for a long time. And then when they took that offline, they didn't just take the ability to buy offline. Like I can't go and re-download old <laughs> Wii stuff. Like It would have to be on your system, it's right? Gone. Correct. So I tried right. to download everything that I could possibly fit on there before it was over. And so now my I have not sold my Wii because that's what I'm, I'm like, this is a library of games that I thought I was purchasing. But it turns out, thanks to what Nintendo did... In yeah. the end, at, at its core, all I did was rent them. I didn't well, actually buy them. That's because Nintendo, and still is, behind the times when it comes to, uh, you know, their network infrastructure and, and sort of, yeah. you know, their storefront, their digital storefront, and, and having that be with the times, you know, like. Right. So. That's... Now, if they had turned around and said, but all these games that were on this store are now part of your Switch Online subscription, or, you know, maybe there's a switch online pro that costs more but now it's a subscription service where you can have access to all these that at least softens the blow a little bit and i think for sony it's the same thing it's like hey we're there's going to be a lot of vita and ps3 and psp software that you no longer can buy anywhere Mm. but we're going to soften the blow by doing this and it'd be nice to know like what that plan is if there is if there is a plan um now again we don't have the numbers maybe the analytics show that who cares no one cares no one does this anyway and I know that people talked about that with backwards compatibility. They're like, hey, the data doesn't show that this stuff gets purchased and played much, at least percentage-wise, compared to new stuff. Mm-hmm. That's fair. But look at the general public response when you do it. When you do good backwards compatibility, uh, people just love it. It doesn't yeah. matter if they spend a ton of time playing it. There's something. There really is something to that reassurance that my digital library is safe. And yeah. it's good. Tied to my account, I'm not going to lose it. And even though maybe technically I've heard people say that technically you're just renting a license for the game when you buy it digitally. Right. Um, But that's not what we're told when we buy it. You're, you're hitting a button that says buy. And I mean, if that's the case, then, then there needs to be laws written where that's not the case or something. Maybe it's saying, maybe that's extreme saying laws need to be written, but I mean, or it needs to say it. It needs to say, yeah. And some kind of, maybe there is a disclaimer that most of us never read, but some kind of disclaimer saying you're not actually, you don't, own this product it's only viable for the the lifetime of this store like they need to specify that a little more maybe they do maybe i need to read my terms and conditions more but who's (laughs) got time for that it's funny that you're saying that though so like the one that the on the last season of parks and rec when when grizzle shows up right Uh and and there's that whole episode of like you know they're they're actually uh uh, hacking into people not hacking but you know they're they're peeking into people's phones and and they're they're sending them things and (laughs) yeah and and and, and, um and ron smashes it yeah (laughs) um and uh jesus ben uh ben you know he he's the one that's set up sort of the uh the contract with them yes and, and obviously they they pulled the wool over his eyes so to speak because there's the one day where the uh whatever um oh what is it not harry potter but something something this is distracting him that day and they added sort of like a little a, a little subsection in the contract that he missed that says like yes oh, actually, was it game of can't... thrones or something that yeah yeah yeah, maybe? yeah it was yeah. the game of thrones like yeah. series finale or something he's like yeah, yeah. That, that was on that day and i and I didn't, I didn't read that part of the thing. So like, and then that show actually hadn't ended when that Parks and Rec thing aired. So they made up their own version. Yeah, and Leslie yeah. says something like, "Man, that show really went off the rails." Like I forget what it was. But, yeah, they said somebody yeah. showed up or something. But yeah. but like he then he when he, then he, when he goes into the courtroom and he's like, "Listen, people shouldn't need this like extremely advanced like." you know, freaking degree of, uh, you know, of, of figuring out these contracts, these like yeah. billion page like contracts and, and, and all these agreements and whatever, like it should just be 
plain, plain and simple right there for people when like if I'm buying a game, when I walk into a store, I hand them money and they give me the game. I don't need mm -hmm. to read some sort of, you know, uh, some sort of whatever agreement or something like. So why is that the case on on a digital storefront, you know? Yeah, so. there needs to be some clarity there for sure. If it's true that I've heard this said a lot that, you know, people will say kind of casually like it's like it's uh, obvious. But, you know, you don't actually own the game. You just you're buying a license to have access to the game yeah. or, a certain, you know, and I'm like, am I, though? Because I don't remember seeing that anywhere. Maybe it's there. You know, maybe it's there because I've gone digital on a lot of my systems. And um, that would be a huge bummer. Yeah. Thankfully, the systems that I primarily play on now, the Switch and the and the PS5, they're so in insanely popular that I don't think it's, it's going to be a while till I have to worry about this. This um, is why I'm old school, Tim, and I still like buying my games physical. <laughs> I still I like some physical. Basically yeah. having, I, I mostly buy physical unless something's like on crazy sale and it's, it's like a year, two, three years old. Like I'm like, yeah, sure. You know what? Fine. I, I'll buy it digital, but otherwise I, mean, I just, I love having the, it's almost like when they invented the remote for the TV and people no longer had to get up and go <laughs> over and hit the buttons, like being able to just sit there and switch between games. I don't have to swap discs or cartridges. Yeah. You just it's, there is it's something just, to that. It just doesn't bother. Yeah, I mean, people really are like, oh, I hate getting up and swapping. It's like really, you hate <laughs> moving your body like a couple feet forward and put. It's all right, sure. Okay. Which, by the way, I've learned that I have to close out all my PlayStation Five games anyway because my freaking PS Five will go into some sort of bad shutdown mode mm. if I try to go into rest mode while a game is suspended. Yeah, I get a go turns green and then shuts down all the way. And, and then when I turn it back people. on, it'll be like rebuilding whatever. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what? So um, it's terrifying. It's happened like five times. So I've stopped leaving games suspended. I've been told that, uh, yeah, it's an issue. They know about it and they're supposed, supposedly fixing it. But just don't put your games in suspend anymore. And I'm like, okay, I, I get that that's the fix. But that's really stupid. Like it worked <laughs> on their previous console, like last yeah. generation. Well, how, I mean, that's it a... not work now. Well, like for instance, I mean, like mine doesn't do that. So obviously it's a sporadic thing that they're like, oh, shoot. All right. Well, we got to find do it. To, it didn't do it to mine every time. That was the thing. Yeah. It did it sometimes. Well, they so. got to find the fix. But I mean, that's not going to happen overnight. And but it's annoying. It's but uh, so it's in, definitely my, annoying. in my Googling, it looks like it's been happening since launch. Like people noticed it right away. Okay. So I'm a little surprised that here we are. We are now in April and uh, there's no fix. You can't keep well, your game suspended on your modern, sleek, new, gigantic console. Obviously, uh, Tim, they've been really just focused on taking down the PlayStation 3, <laughs> the Vita. The, yeah. <laughs> so Listen, all the resources have been put into that taking it down. So, you know. That's a good point. I didn't even think yeah. about that. They're too busy yeah. trying to figure out how to screw over their customers. Yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly. The thing is, like, it's still my preferred console to play on on a big screen. Like, I still like that controller. Uh, I think it's really it's really slick. I like it a lot. And I still love their um, console exclusives, I think, are... Second to none. I mean, unless Nintendo starts cranking out some more here in the near future, Sony's far and away the best place to play console exclusives right now. So as much as I still criticize little things here and there that I wish they would fix up, um, yeah, I freaking love that system. And and I'll talk about some of the games I'm playing on there here in a second. But um, all right, that's it for headlines that I had. I was looking on my phone before we started to see if there's anything else. There are a few things, you know, game updates and, you know, a few trailers here. Nothing crazy, though. Unless you've got something that jumped out at you this week that you wanted to highlight, um, no, I thought. I mean, uh, I, I anticipated Derek being on so we could discuss um, Outriders because I'm assuming you're not playing that. No, uh, obviously we will not be discussing that. Uh, I did I download am... it though because um, you know I've seen enough positive feedback about the game itself. Yeah. I know that there's a lot of connection issues with it. And that's a whole different story. People are having a lot of issues connecting to this game that, for some reason. That could mean good things, though, because that means that maybe there's just so many people slamming the servers. Well, it's on Game Pass, so you instantly yeah. have a huge audience you wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. Um, um, so, but I saw that you jotted down uh, Narita Boy, and I saw the yeah. trailer for that after I saw you writ uh, wrote that down. Dude, that game is freaking gorgeous. <laughs> like, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, so that's on Game Pass as well, and it's, I yeah. think it's out on all platforms. I think I know I saw it on the Switch Store. I didn't look. Yeah, it's on the PlayStation oh, also. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's like twenty five bucks. I don't recommend buying this game for twenty five or even twenty. Nah. This is the kind of game that I would wait until it's either free on a service you subscribe to, so it's on Game Pass. So if you have that, go grab it. Maybe it'll be on PS Plus. Maybe it'll be on sale for ten bucks. That might be worth it. Um, this game looks super cool. It's like it Tron. Does. 
meets certain aspects of games like Dead Cells, where you had pixelated art that was animated and detailed in a way that it had no business being. So Dead Cells yeah. had, a, had a really pretty pixel art style to it as well. This is similar to that. Um, not similar art style, but just similar in terms of like, this looks really good. The way everything's moving, it's just, yeah. it, it's really impressive. That being said, it bombards you with story and text First, I mean, I'm, I'm not Derek Teague here, but since Teague's not here, we'll try to represent his spirit. Mm. Um, yes. There's so much, to, even if you're skimming, and I started skimming because none of it makes sense. Most of the words they're saying sound like nonsense. So you're again, you're kind of like in this computer program, mm -hmm. and they keep talking about the creator, and I'm already getting right. very strong Tron vibes from the overall story, and there's a program that's gone bad and you're supposed to help all the good programs restore order and all and that's kind of the general gist of it and but you need the creator to do this so you have to remind the creator of certain memories so you have to go through and find the creator so it's very kind of um trippy in addition to being tron like so mm. but as all the characters are if you want to call them characters as the programs are all talking to you most of what they say is so nonsensical because it's using terms and describing things in a way that it's like, do you think I already know this lore? Cause sure. I don't know what you're talking about here. <laughs> um, you will and, know Tim, you will know uh, if they did one or two of those at the start and then kind of started you from the beginning, like a lot of games and movies even will do that where yeah. they'll give you some kind of statement or even series of statements or dialogue that you're like, I don't think I understood that. And then they'll walk you through it. So then as you think back, you're like, oh, that's what they meant. So that's Tarantino what Tarantino it. That's what I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm waiting for that. Haven't seen it. That being said, when you get to actual gameplay fight moments, it's pretty fun. Um, it's not the best fighting system ever, but it's pretty cool. You, there, you know, there's a, a dodge and attack. You've got a, a shotgun attack, which you, if you hold, you can use all your shotgun shells to do a beam attack. And then those kind of reload, you know, recharge over time. Um, you the get a reviews, sword. The reviews I was reading did say that it's a little floaty, but um... it's a little floaty. And there's some platforming sections that are more demanding than I would have expected for okay. something that is very not precise in the controls. That can be annoying because yeah. they've got so many background and foreground elements. So they'll have things. A lot of platforming games do this now, where they'll have something in the foreground that kind of blocks your view. So as you're moving, there's a beam that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. across in front, and that's okay for an aesthetic moment that you want to create some depth. It's right. awful when you're trying to platform and that right. gets in your way and you can't tell like, where you're going to land. You should be able to see where you need to get to if you're going to put like a space between me and I'm on this platform and I need to get to this platform. I, I need to see where I'm going. So, so that there's a few elements like that that um, keep it from being excellent. Yeah. But it it is good. It's it's interesting and visually it's something else. Like visually it really yeah. is cool. It, it, when I when I was watching the trailer, like the second I saw those visuals, I was like, "Oh, I really really want to play this." But obviously, you know, something can look as pretty as it wants if the substance there's no substance there. Then, then what's the point? You know. I think so. I think a lot of folks might like it. It's there's just so many other games that have a similar side scrolling action element to it mm -hmm. that are better. Um, I always point to stuff like Dead Cells as, like, to me, it's one of the best fighting systems in a side-scrolling game like that. Uh, I know it's a little, it can be a little harsh, a little brutal in terms of difficulty. And, um, but anyway, Dead Cells is still the one I always recommend for folks to play. But there's other ones too. Even, do you remember that game Outland that came out several yeah. years ago? I still think that one had a better combat system. And the switch between mm. the two colors yeah, to yeah. activate certain things was really creative. I still would prefer something like that uh, to this. So this isn't quite their gameplay wise. But it's not bad. It's not like a three or something. It's mm -hmm. it's honestly it's probably the swimming in sevens <laughs> type of a game, and its visual go. style probably brings it up at least yeah. a couple of points there. Yeah, the visual yeah, yeah. style is very very cool, and the music so, was cool in the trailer too. The like, music is nice great. Music. It's very it's, cool it's very it's very trippy. Um, yeah. I've fought a couple bosses already. It's not very difficult. Yeah. Um, like as far as the actual challenge they're presenting to you, I didn't. I'm not finding it to be super difficult. The difficult parts I'm finding feel like bad uh, layout design mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm missing a jump I should have made. And I'm like, well, I couldn't see where that platform was because they've got all this stuff in the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, it's good. It's it's good. It's not great. If you've got Game Pass, it's certainly worth checking out if you like side-scrolling games. If you don't, I don't recommend it at that price. From what I've heard and read, it's a pretty meaty game. So there's probably a lot to do and a lot to upgrade. You can already tell the things are going to let you upgrade. 
Um, I'm not sure if that's true or not, by the way. So don't take my word on it. But mm. um, it seems like there's a good amount to it. There's, I think there's going to be four main worlds. They described them pretty early on okay. um, for you to go through. And um, But yeah, yeah, it's it's good, not great. I've got too many other things that are truly great that I'm playing for this one to really sidetrack me. But I did want to just mention that I'm playing it, and it's decent. It's worth trying if you've yeah. got it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I saw the 25, and I was like, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how long it is. It yeah. seemed kind of pricey for what could potentially just be like five to ten hours. It is a it is a little it's not much. pricey. I mean, twenty five dollars isn't like a lot of money, but you know what I mean. Like, well, I think weird. in the world we're in now with video games and so many indie titles and downloadable only and all that kind of stuff, I think we have a most of us have a pretty good idea of where we would value things. And yeah. to me, this price is a little steep for what I've experienced with it so far. Like yeah, if, yeah. if this were a demo that I played, I wouldn't spend 25 on it, but yeah. you know, if it drops down to 15, I might be like, all right, all right, I'll grab it for 15. Like that's, it's good enough for sure for that. It's definitely good enough to try. If you've got game pass, yeah. you know, you might as well, might as well give it a whirl if you've got game pass. So fair enough. Um, so yeah, playing that one, of course, still playing a lot of monster hunter rise. Uh, but like I said before, my my kids have swiped that cartridge from me in the last couple of days, so I haven't had time with it this weekend. Those monsters, but um, they're loving it. I'm th- I'm honestly considering just getting a couple more copies of it. Uh, <laughs> hey, at this yeah, point. you guys could uh, team up together. That'd be cute. That's what I'm thinking. Like if they're interested in it now, and I'm liking it, it'd be kind of fun to play together. But the other possibility is I let them kind of burn themselves out on it because the game does ramp up the difficulty, and yeah. then they'll be bored, and I'll get it back. But sure. We shall see. Tell me about this Fantasian. Fantasian, what is this? Fantasian, dude. Oh, so I've 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 only played an hour and a half so far, so I don't okay. have any in depth what is it? analysis. So, um, the father of Final Fantasy, Tim uh, Nobuo, uh, Sak- sorry, no, um, Sakaguchi. I'm thinking Nobuo Uematsu, uh, Hironobu. Uh, I mean, Sakaguchi. we all were, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was mixing up my Asian names. You know, it's so common. Dude, you could have come in here and just started naming types of sushi. I wouldn't know who you're talking about. Sakaguchi is the that name I do Final recognize. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so he hasn't worked at Square Enix for quite a while. Uh, I think 2004 is the date that I saw. Um, so anybody that remembers Lost, uh, was it Lost Odyssey on Xbox 360? That was the first uh, game that Mistwalker, his uh, ind- uh, independent studio, did. Uh, and then they did Blue Dragon. Um, and then some years later on the Wii, they did The Last Story, oh, um, which right. coincidentally was the last uh, console game that they ever made. Because then they did a couple of mobile games that have since then been discontinued. Um, so they've kind of been a little all over the place. They haven't like really hit like huge numbers, unfortunately. Last Story was one of those ones that got... The price went way up if you didn't get it in the first. Yeah, it place. was it was that in Xenoblade. In Xenoblade Chronicle, yeah, right? Like those were the ones that like they were like at the tail end of the Wii's uh, uh, lifespan. Really hard to find. Yeah, hard to find. And then like when they stopped making new copies, yeah, like at GameStop used, it was like eighty bucks minimum. So, um, but yeah, so this is this is their newest game. Um, it is on Apple Arcade only, which is a all bummer. right. Next game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bummer because you know what Sakaguchi deserves better than that. Like for the love of God, somebody just write this man a check, just a very large check, and let him just make a grand RPG. Like please, um, yeah. I, I made a post. I, I need Sony to give Sakaguchi the Kojima treatment and just say, you know what, just make a game for us. We'll, yeah, we'll, build we'll your own financially studio. support you mm-hmm. a little bit. You know, yeah. And, and just please make, dude. Imagine, imagine Sakaguchi making a original Final Fantasy esque RPG using the Decima engine, which is the Horizon Zero Dawn engine, yeah, which also used for Death Stranding. Like, can you imagine? That'd yeah, be insane. That'd be, yeah, that'd be amazing. I mean, insane. But anyways, so this is uh, their newest game. Um, the look of it is very unique. So what they did is the backgrounds, right? Um, they're all handmade dioramas. Um. I don't know if you had caught that because you were reaching over. Um, I did. Sorry, I had to close my window because there's... Oh, there's, no, that's okay. I don't know if there's a drag race. What's happening outside of my house right now? There's just Maybe. a lot of cars driving. They're racing for you said it's like a You said it's like a diorama, the visual style? No, I'm saying the, at the actual background, so they photographed, they handmade dioramas. I think it's 150 what? of them. Yeah, so I think the number is 150 dioramas. They made 
these dioramas as the backgrounds, the backdrops of this of the environments that you're walking through with the three D rendered anime looking character. What? Um, and it's it's super unique, dude. So like, when the very first section, like when you when you start the game, it's very futuristic, so it's not as distinctly diorama esque. Like, okay. you don't really quite get it in that first environment. You see bits of it, you're like, oh, yeah, no, that does look like handmade. But, like, it because it's futuristic and I think they kind of added some sort of, like, lighting, like, when they were actually making the game, like, not, like, natural lighting, but kind of, like, you know, in the game when they were making it. But then oh, okay. when you get to the, um, when you get to the second area, which is, like, the first town, um, that you can absolutely tell. you can absolutely tell it's like handmade and then you're just walking around it as this um as the main character leo um uh, very cliche he has amnesia uh <laughs> very very <laughs> jrpg um okay so i i came on the apple store here while you're describing this i wanted to see and some of the screenshots they even have in the preview you can see yeah like i know you won't be able to see that super well oh it disappeared yep. Yep. Hang on, I gotta change my background. <laughs> well, I mean, I can there's, bring there's up one. The... There's one in particular where you're kind of in what looks like a not a mine, like a um, shoot, what, oh, a quarry. It looks like you're in a quarry almost because there's like this dirt path coming down, and you're surrounded by rocks and stuff. And your character standing there in what looks like very real life. These are real rocks that they took a picture of. Yeah, let me see if I can. Um... Hold on, because, I mean, we are a visual podcast now. Um, so if I screen share to you, is that going to show on the thing? Or Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Window. Yeah, it's very impressive. Some or maybe I can just do this. Yeah. I do. Start sharing. So I don't know if that's... Is it showing me or is it showing my desktop now? It's loading. Okay. Oh, oh there it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's, that's exactly it. Um, yeah. So yeah, like this for it's like this is like you can if you look at this like this back here it clearly looks like it's just handmade like they took um, yeah and the and the buildings here look handmade like but then you have well, all these three D next couple images there was a couple other ones that look yeah um, oh this this about. little store here like oh no that's not going to be a normal size image I hate when it says it's decent size but uh, they usually want you to pay to download it oh, that one right there is a rock yep 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 that's the one that jumped out at me I hate that. Hold just on, well, click on it for click on it first and then right and then open a new tab yeah now open that in new tab oh is that not what i did okay my bad there yeah i see like like raw that just like looks like straight up real rocks that's crazy. and then it's like a 3d rendered character like okay so explain this to me one more time they actually did create this set yeah they created of it exactly okay yeah and then they and then they obviously you know using computer software then you know pieced it all together that's a 3d rendered um character model why is um, this on phones only? It's so annoying. I know, I know. Honestly, dude, this would this would uh, sit so well on the Switch. It would just totally work on the Switch because the thing is, it's not it's not um, a juggernaut of a game visually. Like it's not super intense. Like the Switch would be able to play it. Um, yeah. The only thing um, is they would have to redo the controls because essentially the way that the game controls is like you poke on a on a spot and the character moves there. So like a little well, you like could do that on Switch. Yeah, but I'd rather like use the analog stick to move him. Yeah, that's true. Like you know what I mean? Just just so it feels more like kind of you know gamey, where I'm just yep. using like I'm using a controller and 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 it's more tactile. But um, yeah, it's just it's visually super unique. I think it's super cool. Um, the music, like I said, Uimatsu, who is the father of Final Fantasy music, uh, has made most of the Final Fantasy series uh, music, um, collaborated with uh, Sakaguchi. So the music in this game is, is Uimatsu. It is amazing. Um, the, there's, a, there's a battle theme that really reminds me of, um, of some Final Fantasy VIII music specifically. Nice. Um, and, that, and that first area actually... Um, that when you wake up and it's kind of like a futuristic setting actually really reminds me of, uh, of the future, uh, the, the later sections of Final Fantasy VIII, like way later. Um, and then there's like this one track where it's so when when you get to that town, uh, somebody mentions like a fortune teller. Oh, he can tell you uh, your past and, and present um, to kind of maybe try to, you know, 
uh, kickstart your memory because obviously if he can look into the past then he can tell you some things and maybe that'll make him remember so when you get up to like his little hut the music in there is like straight up final fantasy 9 like it just sounds like it was ripped from final fantasy 9 um so the music is just it's just amazing i mean uimatsu is 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 a genius so um, his music is always fantastic. Um, the combat. And how about the? Yeah, I was gonna say combat. I saw some shots of the combat. Is it turn based? So I, it is turn based. Um, I just got the second character, so I can, I, which I'm glad because I could at least explain a little bit more than just the simple, um, you know, simple approach uh, that was in the first hour. So, uh, yeah, it's turn based. So your characters are on one side, the enemies are on, on another. Uh, because you're playing on the phone, there's a lot of touch going on. So. When you're doing an attack, you can either just like tap on where it says attack, or you can drag it over to the specific enemy that you want to attack. Um, with special abilities, so the the one special ability that Leo has is uh, slash, and it's basically like it it does a slash um, sort of shockway move in a line. Mm. So if I target like an enemy behind one of the enemies, it'll hit both of them because the line's crossing over both of them. But that, is that kind of luck based on the way they lay out when the battle starts? Yeah, 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 pretty much, yeah. Um, okay. which is fine. But so uh, with the second character, um, she was just introduced, uh, Kina or, or Kina. It's K-I-N-A, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it. There's well, no voice like, acting, unfortunately. It's like Kina, Bridge of Spirits. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, so is this Kina, a different <laughs> way to spell it? <laughs> um, but... uh. Yeah, so she does. Uh, she's sort of the mage, clearly, because okay. the the first thing that you do with her is um, you do uh, holy. She she's he's basically attacking the enemies, but they keep like respawning. So he's like, shoot, what the hell am I supposed to do? So she's like, let me let me try this. And basically, so when you click holy, um, it's almost like pulling back on an arrow. So when you take the holy icon and you drag back on the phone, it actually arches the line. So like there was like a row of enemies, but kind of like in it's sort of like an arch. That's so when I, cool. So when I pulled back on the icon, it basically connected on all the enemies, and it it did sort Dang of it. like this like almost like wanted the movie wanted like a. Curve You're gonna make shot. me sign like, up for Apple Arcade again, <laughs> dude. Pl please, if anybody, if you love JRPGs, you love traditional JRPGs, please for the love of God play this game because I've only been playing it for an hour and a half, and like it just like. It's just dripping of Final Fantasy. It you just, know what else it, is annoying here is you have to subscribe to Apple Arcade. I can't just buy. It's not like buy it for fifteen bucks or something. Like you have to subscribe to Apple right. Arcade. Right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Annoying. I mean, I hadn't, I had not used the free trial yet, so I, I used it for this. Um, I did, and I did like some of the games in there. Some of them yeah. even back in the day, and it's been a while, so I bet you there's more. That's where I played stuff like. Uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name of it. it. Came out on the Switch recently. It's that puzzle game where you chain through monsters together. Uh, anyway, uh, boot hero. No, not that no. one. Although that okay. looks cool too. But anyway, yeah. th there are some good ones on there. So if you do yeah, yeah, yeah. decide to try this, uh, Apple Arcade, if you're listening, uh, it is. It, there are some cool things on here, but, but this I game alone looks like it's worth trying out this way. Well, it 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 like absolutely like again, if you love Final Fantasy or just traditional JRPGs in general, please play this game because I again I've only played an hour and a half and it just it's just. It feels like basically a Final Fantasy game, like the way yeah. that it's written, like the way that when Leo's talking and just the way that that his um, the dialogue, how it, just the way he's interacting with these characters that he's meeting is just it feels like a Final Fantasy character. Um, again, it helps that the music is very uh, reminiscent of Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, it's just a bummer that it's on phones, but like fingers crossed that it at least comes out like on Switch or something. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't get how they're making money off of this though. Cause it's free and it doesn't seem like there's microtransactions. Well, it's not really free. It's part of a subscription service. So it's one of those okay. things where they're getting a cut for, for downloads that they get through okay. Apple arcade. So it's, it's not going to be that different from putting on a movie or a TV show on Netflix or something. So, so basically the more people download that, that download this game, then they would make more money. Possibly. It depends on how their deals yeah. written. Yeah, I would yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. with a company that big, that's the case. Yeah, Tim, I'm going to is... need you to download it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I need everyone to download it because please, like, I don't, I keep seeing, because uh, I was Googling um, Fantasian just to get images uh, for the screen, uh, for the thumbnail and like articles. Oh, you know, Fantasian, the, the game from Sakaguchi is finally out. And like a bunch of like of those articles saying, you know, hopefully not his last game. I was like, whoa, did he say at some point this is going to be like, I don't I don't want this guy to stop making games, please. Like I need him to keep making games <laughs> like 
he's just you know it, it, it he still has it like it's just i'm playing this game and it it feels through and through like a final fantasy game and but it does it feels unique at the same time it, it doesn't yeah, it's, it's five bucks a month yeah so let's say this game keeps your attention for a month that's five bucks right um so I might I might sign up for it again just to try this yeah. out because it, it looks this, really cool. This game is absolutely worth five, ten, ten bucks, and the and also um, what's super cool is so um, my TV apparently because I was trying to find I was trying to find a way to play this on my computer Tim, and there's no just straightforward way of doing it. You have to f- download programs, um, and I downloaded oh, I one. See. I downloaded one, but it just wasn't con- my phone wasn't connecting to the program for some reason. It just wasn't recognizing it, and I didn't understand why. Um, but then I noticed on my phone because it was showing my PC, uh, my laptop, and it was showing my TV. I was like, "Oh, hold on a second. So I clicked on my TV. My TV is compatible with AirPlay. Oh, got so it. I've been playing this. I was playing that on my TV. That's cool. With a controller or just with your phone? Just on my, with my phone, because again, okay. it has the touch. You know, it has the the mechanics are, are touch screen based. So hey, I can it, do my free trial again. It's let me do a month free trial again. Ah, well, there you go. Um, so obviously, super weird. It almost feels like a, a really disconnected, like playing on the DS because the TV is like not exactly on top of where the touch screen is. Right. Um, but I was, you know, I was looking at the TV during the cutscenes, even during like some combat. I kind of was looking up at the screen. Um, yeah. And the music was coming in through the TV, so obviously not coming through the phone. It just sounded much better through the TV. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if if you have the means of playing this on a TV or on you know somehow on your computer, then then do it that way. But do you think it works on iPad? Is it? Yeah, it it should work on the iPad. Yeah, that'd be a cool place to play it, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I I yeah I I I absolutely am gonna finish this game. Like it's 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 already awesome. Didn't so, know you had become a uh, DFC, a mobile gamer, <laughs> DFC casual fan. Dude, but that's I will cool. do. I will do anything for Sakaguchi. <laughs> I will do don't anything. Tell him that. <laughs> I'll tell um, him. All right. Well, money. you've got you've got me convinced. I signed up for another month of this thing to give it a whirl. So that's cool. It's downloading now. Excellent. Ba, 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 Asian. Ba. Well, listen. Since my kids are playing a lot of Monster Hunter Rise, it's good to have another option. So I'll be able yes. to use my phone. Exactly. Also, I've been when I have the chance. I was like, well, they they took away my Monster Hunter, and I'm excited because I like I like my kids to get into deep RPGs like that. So I'm more than okay with them playing it because they'll lose interest, and then I'll get I'll get to play through it again, um, or play through it some more. But I still wanted to fight some big monsters in a deep RPG, mm-hmm. so I thought I'd fire up Demon Souls. Demon and I did. Souls. Demons <laughs> Souls, <laughs> which just is rolls Z. off the top. Yeah, I always just make the S of the last, the last S and the first S just the same S. So it's Demon Souls, the way I say it, and yes. I understand that's not correct, but yes. um, I know. All right. Anyway, this game is, of course, for those of you who haven't played it before, this is the precursor to the Dark Souls series, which then, of course, they also put out Bloodborne and Sekiro, and you know, of course, they they're well known. They pretty much created a new genre mm. uh, of games. You know the Soulsborne type games, or the Souls like, however you want to call it. Um, and I like some of them. I I always have had trouble getting into the Dark Souls series specifically. I've got Dark Souls remastered on my Switch, um, and I played that one a decent amount. I played Dark Souls three a decent amount. I just for some reason those games aren't clicking with me. Yeah. I did like Bloodborne a lot. I ended up. I don't remember what point I got to in that game where all of a sudden the hooks were in me pretty bad and I just couldn't stop playing it until it was over. I loved Bloodborne. thought that was great. Uh, I thought Sekiro was fun, but as we've talked about before, I I hit a difficulty spike that was too much for me to want to spend time on. And I was like, I think I'm done. I think I'm yeah. good. Um, but it was cool. Still very cool. Um, so I started Demon Souls. Demon's Souls. Ugh. And... <laughs> Uh, just say demon souls because like seriously what the what the hell is with the extra apostrophe at like i don't go to know hell. go to hell and guys in like, the game itself as there's lots of dialogue to kind of kick off the lore at the beginning and then you're talking to characters that are trying to explain things to you they keep saying the phrase these demon souls <laughs> so it's like if you keep calling it demon souls can you just call the game right. demon right. souls like we get right. it whatever Anyway, uh, so I, I've only beaten the first boss, and then I've kind of started that next area of that first larger area. And 
Um, this is obviously a huge game. Uh, I know for folks who are, you know, um, veterans at this, they could probably fly through it. I get it. I get for some folks, it's maybe even much smaller than a Dark Souls game. But for me, I can already tell there's a good amount of game here to be played. Yeah. So that part's exciting to know there's plenty to uncover, plenty of bosses to fight. I know there's co-op because folks have already offered to try some co-op with me, which is cool. Um, but it's it's fun. And I, I even though it does have that punishing element that, that these games are known for, it it doesn't feel that punishing because they yeah. do give you some – they do limit you when you try to go back and recover your items and your body. But they also give you some special items to instantly recover your body. Like there's there's some things – there's some shortcuts that they give you. Mm-hmm. Um if you need them, those items are hard to come by these special stones, but um, they're still possible to find and to use if you need to. But yeah, this game plays fantastically. I like the way it feels. I like the, I like the combat from what I played so far. I picked the class. I have no idea what class to go with. Cause there's like no, yeah. nothing at the beginning really tells you, you know, here are the types of things you'll be able to do or not do. If you pick this class, you just kind of have the way yeah. that you approach it in this one too, because it was the original one. And then they kind of tweak things with the dark soul series specifically, but I guess it's, it's definitely a bit different from what I've heard. The, the yeah. way that you approach like your, um, your, like your actual stats and like which weapons right. you're using and things like that. So, yeah. And, and Sasan uh, put some good tips in there about which weapons to pick and what to look for, because mm-hmm. they will, be able to be upgraded in a certain way that either will get maxed out to an S ranking or not. Right. So you have to be careful about which ones you what you spend yeah. uh, your resources to upgrade. Um, so that was a good tip. So is but, this your first time playing Demon Souls or? Yes. Oh, is it? Okay, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I never played Demon Souls before. Okay, because I played it back. Yeah, I played it back originally when it when it first came out. Yeah. So that that was pretty crazy back then because I was like, whoa, this is a hard game, very weird, yes, unique game, <laughs> very strange. Uh, yeah. Visually, just absolutely stunning. I yes. can see why a lot of folks last year were like, "This is the best looking game of the year," and it's hard yeah. to argue. And I knew just based on the videos, that's hard to argue with. You know, yeah. it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah. It clearly, some core elements to it are clearly dated. So even though I never yes. played the original, I can tell certain pieces, whether it's certain pieces of dialogue or the way menus work, or <laughs> even just upgrading or repairing items. It's like, well, they decided to stick with this menu system. You can tell. Because yeah. this is not modern, so and that's and that's okay. You kind of just adjust and and go with it. But and even like the inventory system, as you're looking through some stuff, it's just like, well, th- this is behind the times. But I think they, for the most part, brought a lot of this over, mm-hmm. and just made it all look really, really nice. So, yeah, I mean, even the, the menus goes, are clearly like they look cleaner. Like visually, they look cleaner. Right. So, I will say that the the text for the main game title is a kind of a interesting choice like it looks like a silly type of font <laughs> for demons not, not feeling the font <laughs> i'm not it's like at that point you might as well go with comic sans like what are you doing with that font what is that so this is a great game it's like one of the best games i ever played but i friggin hate the font so 7.8 the title yeah the title font brings it down a full yes. point 7.8 too much font too much silly font so. so listen it's a great game plays great it's uh if you like souls games and you have if you like me and you hadn't played this one it's totally worth jumping into it's a great showpiece for the ps5 because the visuals are so nice yeah uh, and the lighting and the enemies the boss i just that first well it's not only the first boss because there is a boss that you fight at the very very beginning but the first boss that you kind of work your way to um has all these shields you know it's a big blob kind of ugly looking thing uh, that's just cool like visually they did a good job with that it was just gross and it was well done. I just really, really liked it. There's also, you can see sort of the specters of the spirits of other players who have either come before, or I don't know, some of them might be playing now. I couldn't really tell. But um, you can either watch the way they died by touching yeah, the yeah, blood yeah. stain, or sometimes there's just these kind of like white ghost spirits that are actively running around fighting while you are. And so I'm not sure what those are about. If those are like active players right now, or are they just showing you someone else who recently, like I'm not sure what those are or who they yeah. are. Um, but still very cool. Kind of gives you a sense that you're not alone, even though this game is very much about being alone if you're not playing co-op. But um, but yeah, I really dig it, and I am going to keep playing it some more. Not sure that I'll finish it. Bloodborne was the only Souls-like game that I've ever finished. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if this is the one that's going to break that pattern, and I'll finish it. I don't know. But it is really cool. I like it a lot. It's um you know as you're talking about it and I was I was thinking about this game and then the 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 Dark Souls trilogy and then Bloodborne Sekiro like so I'm I'm kind of 
I'm personally overall over like that style of game, mm. like that soul style. But when I think about it, I guess I like the first one and each of its each of their sort of new entries. So like Demon Souls, I I was like, oh, I actually really like this. I did finish Demon Souls, and then when they make Dark Souls, um, I was like, oh, okay, this this is a little bit different. I mean, aesthetically, it's like the same theme, right? Medieval dark fantasy. Um, but there was enough differences that I was like, oh, I, I like this. Um, so you finished that one? I finished that one, but then the mm-hmm. second one I never even played. And then I think last year or maybe the year before, I, I finally tried Dark Souls 3, and I was just like, I don't know, it just got too repetitive. Maybe I just wasn't in the right state of mind of like wanting to appreciate that game, but I just wasn't having it after like... According to Teague, that was the five. best game of 2016, which <laughs> I think it's crazy. Well, you know, Derek likes a lot of seven games so <laughs> dark souls 3 seven. is a swimming and setting no, oh my god um but then fast forward to bloodborne and like that was different enough because aesthetically it's 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 quite different from the dark fantasy um you know uh setting and then sekiro you know samurai sort of dark samurai game so whatever they're making next i don't know what the sort of vibes of that is going to be or how much they'll sort of add to their formula um, but hopefully they, they do change things up a bit. So, yeah, cause it, you know, it seems like when they do more of, of one of that particular type of, you know, like with the dark soul specifically, it, it just become, it feels stale, I guess. Cause they just don't yeah. feel, they don't feel different enough. It just feels like more game. Like it, yeah. it almost feels like an addition to the one that just came before it. So, right. Which do you think will come first a sequel to, uh, Sekiro or Bloodborne? Ooh, um, let's just assume that one of them at least will get a sequel. Which one do you think? I think Bloodborne would come sooner. Just because like Bloodborne is older, so like mm-hmm. at this point, they if they were making a sequel, they've probably already been working on it. Yeah. Um, and is it PS5 exclusive? You think Bloodborne? I uh, I think so. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, it'd be interesting yeah. to see because I mean they they don't have to make it exclusive, right? Unless there's a deal with Sony that that IP is exclusive. Maybe there is. It could be. IP. It could be. Yeah. Maybe they, they might have published that one because their other games are on everything. So yeah. But I think they publish. Same with Demon Souls because Demon Souls I think was published by Sony. I could be wrong oh, here in the okay. states. Okay. Um. But um, because that's why they had to change it to Dark Souls because they um. They didn't have the the. Yeah, the you're right. Sony published it. Yep. Yeah. So I I uh, I think maybe that's the same case with Bloodborne. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so even if it wasn't um, that team specifically doing Bloodborne Two, yeah, I feel like that that would come first for sure. So, yeah, that makes sense. Well, those are most of the things that I'm playing. I mean, I'm still juggling those long things alongside things like Valheim, of course. Still playing Dude, Valheim. Some of that. We still haven't um, connected it in our connected world yet, Tim. I know, but it's cool <laughs> that we can go in there and build our own stuff or explore without. So, necessarily needing to match up our schedules which is cool i did um i did f- mostly finish um i planted a couple trees for additional support so i'm gonna extend that part so i started like this, ho- this I, it looks air- like you flipped the direction of your house you had it facing one way and then you- so when you go out that back gate i started working on the structure towards the left but what happened was as i was going up i just wasn't getting en- the trees weren't high enough for me to go as high as i wanted to Dude, plant pine trees instead because not only so, they're taller, but they yeah it takes a lot longer for the leaves to show up. So that I did in the new structure that I built, sure. and and I think I kind of like it maybe a little bit better because the second you walk out the door, you actually see it there, and it just looks kind of cool, like uh, you know, fifty feet ahead. Um, so Which, I you know what you'll need out to do though, water too, so. you'll need to put probably all the way up to the height of even above a troll. You'll have to put those protective wooden fences all around the tree because a troll could come okay. and knock it down and yeah there goes your support that's true <laughs> yeah so. i'll be i'll be sitting up there looking down like dude knock it off not or and then I just we come could just like that we could extend that whole kind of wooden pole gate all the way around Good. to include it but Good. anyway it would just really suck if you've got this whole suite set up up there and these cool stairways and these connected buildings or whatever it is you're going to have up there and then yeah, one yeah. troll comes in and swings and the whole thing comes crashing I'm just, down i'm just laying in bed just sound asleep <laughs> and then I, my body just ragdolls like falling down <laughs> off of the tree but uh yeah 
yeah, it's it's still super fun, and I mean, yep. you know, now, yeah, now that we have yeah, I was out trying to map out. I was trying to map out um, some additional plains areas for when we do get to that, um, you know, level. You know, once we beat yeah, the yeah, next yeah. couple bosses, for when we get to the plains, so I was trying to kind of just map out where those islands are, the best islands to go to the plains, and uh, I did run across. So it was like a meadows area. So it, mm-hmm. it looks, you know, it's lower level in general for folks who don't, haven't played this game. Meadows are generally lower level. So I was going to pull my boat up there and park and then build my portal, head back home, drop some stuff off and come back and keep sailing. So I pull up in the boat and because we're on a dedicated server now, sometimes uh, the way things render and pop up is it can be a little slower. Like I've noticed that a little bit. Not always, but it can pop up a little slower. So it wasn't until I got right to the shore that I noticed all these buildings popping up and it was one of those abandoned like ruins, villages, oh, okay. meadows. So yeah. I thought, oh, okay, there's just a bunch of houses here. But then I saw these green, this green kind of like uh, smoke coming out of a bunch of them and I realized this uh. is one of those Draugr villages <laughs> and they're all kind of trapped in these houses and the idea is you let them out of the houses, kill them and there's treasures in there and stuff. Mm. So I saw that and then I noticed... Out of the out of the black forest, which that biome is right beside it, comes a troll and a bunch of gray dwarves, and they're attacking the Draugr village. Oh, really? <laughs> and so they're smashing at the houses. The Draugrs are shooting at them, and I'm standing there. I hadn't eaten any food, so I've got like 25 health with no healing yeah. ability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I very quickly got killed because I was. So I actually, when I noticed a troll coming, he saw me. I ran around the village and opened all the doors, trying to let the droggers out <laughs> to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The trolls are outside, guys. You should do something about that. So it worked. They started engaging, but the troll did end up catching me as I was making the yeah. turn to go back towards my boat. He, one of his big giant swings caught me and killed me. So then I had to back at our village. Since I hadn't set up the portal yet, like an idiot, I should have set it up real quick. I had to then build another. Oh man, I had to build another boat, sail all the way there, yep, get my yep. stuff. I wasn't trash. there. I wasn't there. Ugh, I've got a problem. I got a you real know, problem. Maybe, maybe the problem is you just shouldn't sail without me. To... <laughs> yeah, I should not sail unsupervised. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah that yeah. game is freaking awesome, man. I'm really excited yeah. for when they when they add more building stuff because the building can be, like, uh, it's almost cathartic just putting together a yeah. cool building. And so it's, and not my, every... it's honestly my favorite part, like this new house that I just built, like it looks really nice on the inside because, again, I was kind of trying to incorporate building it onto the trees and this like on a slight hill. And it just it's just so cool. Just like yeah. kind of like feeling like a carpenter. You're just putting together this cool house. You're like, yeah, yep. I'm so good at building houses <laughs> in, in pretend we're a Valheim world. Yeah. Um, the other times that I've died aren't nearly as punishing in terms of having so far to go. This one time I did have to go a far away, yeah. but those are more stressful, but in a good way. It's like you're kind of rolling the dice that you're not yeah. going to die. I've gotten attacked by a sea serpent once. Fa- thankfully, I was Ooh. far enough. I was close enough to the shore yeah. that I was able to quickly jump out of the boat. And then once I got far enough away from the shore, the sea serpent stopped attacking my boat and just swam away. I, I, yeah, those guys are obnoxious. It's like, get the yeah. hell out of here. Just go yeah. away. And they're huge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've only seen one. I've only had. I've only seen one of those. But um, when I kept making trips to the um to the swamp, mm-hmm. um, when I was trying to get some iron, because now I have a full iron set, uh-huh. I had to make. I had to make many trips, so I, I came yeah. across like probably four or five of them, and I was like, dude, just f off, like get out of here, <laughs> like leave me alone. I had to like literally kind of. I had to zigzag, like they were alligators. I had to zigzag yep. to try to. I just built a longboat which we could use for some of those longer iron trips. Yeah. Cause you know, the main, the boat I've been using has like only four compartments mm-hmm. to store stuff in. So I did the same thing. I was making lots of trips for iron and for other, other stuff with longboat. We could apparently load up tons of it. I haven't looked Excellent. to Excellent. see. So we should totally do that. But yeah, Valheim, of course, getting some of my time. I feel like there was one other thing that I was playing recently. So monster hunter rise, Actually, I wanted to ask you just, and we could just, I could even just ask you now. Yeah. I, I was reading something where, so you can remove the lim- the limitations when you're building, so things don't crumble down. Is that a, is that like a mod, or is that just in the game? No, that's probably when you go into um, oh, what's the what's the name of it? It's like a developer mode. Oh, uh, okay. Just, like debug can, mode. <laughs> a debug mode. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. Yep, and that was usually easier to access. They changed it; it's still possible to access it. You just there's mm. just a way when you load up the server that you have to kind of activate it. But um, I wasn't sure how you felt about that because we could build some pretty cool things, 
with Good. no limitations, Tim. <laughs> yeah, the w- watching some YouTube videos of um, of some of these guys doing the stuff. It's it's interesting because a lot of the times they're running tests, so they'll even they'll run debug mode and they'll create like a, a little canyon that yeah. has no space to move, and they'll spawn it because you can choose to spawn any enemy you want. So they'll spawn oh, a troll okay. right there. And with that troll stuck in that spot, they'll just test all their weapons out to kind of like figure Ah. out how much damage does does everything do. So there's some interesting stuff that folks are doing. And I think you can do it with building, although I'm not sure if in debug mode you can change kind of the physics that they've put in for the structures. I'm not sure. I haven't seen that. Maybe maybe you could. Yeah. Um, But I do know that when you have stone built up high enough, any wood that's touching that is considered grounded, which is awesome. So you can build that big stone foundation and then you can build a bunch yeah. of and same with a tree i think if you connect to a tree that's considered yeah. well that's too, that's right? what i that's what i was trying to do with that first spot and then the second spot is working out a bit better because i have a i have a stone foundation and then i i started you know putting some stacking some wood up so you know what i recommend and i know that the swamp is in the prettiest of areas but they have these trees that you can't cut down that can't be damaged oh okay they're like there's, so there's ancient trees that are skinnier, and you can chop right. those down to get ancient bark. Yep. And then there's these big old trees, the ones that you usually see from a distance when you're getting close to the swamp. They're kind of the big ones with the creepy-looking branches at the top. Mm. You can't cut those down, and, and neither can enemies, even if a troll for some reason were uh, you know, okay. here. Yeah. So uh, I have built a couple of kind of stairways that wrap around those up to a little house up ah, high. okay. Um, Interesting. Because they can't be collapsed but yeah they don't look as cool like the biomes the other biomes are more scenic because yeah, the swamp yeah, yeah. is so rainy and dank the it's swamp pretty... is you're just you're, the swamp you're going there for a specific reason and then you're getting the hell out of there yes. <laughs> like that's yeah. basically what the swamp is like yeah. yeah well it's the same thing with the planes apparently they have i don't know if you've seen the planes yet but they've got these um kind of these stone pillar looking things but they look yeah. like they look like mountains that someone dynamited all the sides off so it's just like this tall skinny pillar that's made out of just natural stone that mm. same thing like you can't break it and so enemies can't break it either the only thing there is you got those freaking death skeetos i don't want to build while yeah. they're floating <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i don't i don't want to mess with the not yet anyways I, i'm not right. i'm not prepared for that yet so. yeah like i do want to build a plane's house at some point but i'm gonna it have to be a thing where i have set up a house in a nearby biome or something that's safe mm-hmm. where i can easily spawn and run grab my stuff i don't know we also need to, yeah, we would have to, like, take turns, like, doing, like, w- uh, watching, you know? Oh, my gosh, it's true. Body, like, being death a bodyguard while the other one's doing the construction work. <laughs> yeah, freaking death skeetos. Yeah, that game is great. I love that game. And then, yeah, of course, Monster Hunter Rise. Right now, it's a, been a really fun time of gaming for me between Demon, just started Demon Souls, Monster Hunter Rise is great. Um, and, of course, I'm loving Valheim still. And, uh, I, oh, I wanted to close with this, too. I did just watch... Godzilla vs. Kong this weekend. Mm. Actually watched it twice because I watched it myself the day it came out and nice. uh, I was really excited to see it and I really enjoyed it. And then my son wanted to watch it. It's his birthday coming up and I was like, hey, what do you want to do? And he said I, he wanted to stay up late and watch a movie with me. So we stood, we stayed up, made way too much popcorn and drank soda and watched Kong vs. Godzilla. Excellent. Um, and he, lo- he liked it too. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's not... I mean... I know a lot of folks will criticize the human story in these monster movies. And when sure. people do that, I understand it because I'm like, you're right. You're right. Those characters are pretty shallow and and some of the writing is, you know, not top notch. I get it. But I think for the most part, they, they did fine with this one. Mm-hmm. Same with the other Godzilla movie and with Kong Skull Island and with Godzilla King of the Monsters. It's like they've got their... Strengths and weaknesses when it comes down to it. I just want to see these giant creatures oh, yeah. clash. Like, and I do th- I do think this one does a better job out of all the newer Godzilla and Kong movies of displaying some insane creature battles. Like you really? can it, it does a great job of zooming out to the right point and zooming in at certain spot, spots too, but you can zoom out to the point where you can really see an awesome fight. And I Dude, I loved it. Th- yeah. If you if you're saying this is the, I mean like that second Godzilla movie that was insane, dude. Like the fights in that are bananas. They like, are. I think this one's better. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Like yeah, the, the three-headed one. What's the three-headed one? I forget. Ghidorah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. That one's yeah. yeah. There's two main fights. The first one is a little shorter, but it was heavily featured in the trailers. It's out okay. with water. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, and that one is cool and pretty creative the way they did that, but not not super long fight. And then the final battle 
has a couple of, I guess you can call them stages to it, right? Where there's little pauses and breaks for various reasons. Yeah. And it keeps escalating. And then I, th I think the way it culminates at the end is just really cool. And mm. yeah, one thing though, if you're a major Godzilla fan and you don't love Kong as much, this movie really is more of a Kong movie where Godzilla's uh, in it. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm more of a Godzilla person if I'm going to pick between the two. But I think they did their best to like, they don't want either one to seem like, the clear cut good guy or villain, but I still sure. think as watching it from as someone who likes both, I don't, like, I don't really have, I'm, I didn't grow up watching these movies. So like, I, yeah. I think they're well, all the fun. Like... Yeah. They're all fun. And I don't really have a preference. I did get the vibe that Kong is supposed to be the hero that we're relating to. Mm. And while Godzilla isn't a, necessarily a villain, you're still trying to figure out why is he doing what he's doing. And mm. you also don't get any quote unquote, alone time with Godzilla where you're really understanding. I know this sounds really weird. You're not really getting his no, motivations, I mean, it but it with, makes sense, with yeah. Kong, you totally get his motivations with Godzilla. It's just, you get some of them through some secondary dialogue, but it's mostly a Kong movie. So, yeah. Yep. Well, and, I, I, and I know that rubs some people the wrong way. So. <laughs> some people don't love that, but I think yeah. the fight scenes are pretty fantastic. I think the visual effects are just unreal man well maybe they did that to kind of balance it because they so with this new monster universe that they're building like there's just the one kong movie but then there's two godzilla movies so maybe that they, they kind of balance it out that way where this is like a versus movie but they obviously focus more on kong just to kind of you know yeah yeah i mean in some ways think back to captain america civil war i mean that's not just, that's more of an avengers movie than just right. captain america Really, it's almost an Iron Man movie. Like it's better than Iron Man two or three. That's for sure. It's a it's uh, a half Avengers versus the other half of the Avengers movie. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's so. not really just Captain America, although he of yeah. course is kind of the central figure throughout. But um, yep. uh, anyway, I did I did enjoy it a lot. I nice. I'm, I really dug it. So I could see myself watching it even one more time before it because I think it's it's only streaming through the end of April on HBO okay. Max. So oh okay. Um. I did not know that. So yeah, I should, I should get on that. I should actually, I have the first one in my H in, in my queue. Cause I hadn't oh. seen uh, that one. The, the Which newest one? Kong, movie. the one that's in this monster, this new Kong movie. That's part of this new uh, universe. Oh, you haven't watched Skull Island. No, I haven't watched that one. So oh, I, I honestly Island. didn't even like, know it was made. I like completely forgot. I know I had seen a trailer of it, of it, like around when it came out, but then like, then like when they were saying, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then like, you know, my, uh, my sister's uh, fiance had mentioned, like if I had seen the Kong movie specifically, just his singular movie, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like I yeah, completely Skull forgot Island's... it existed. So. Dude, it's fantastic. I mean, some of the human performances are a little phoned in, but I Sam love Jackson. Samuel Jackson's yeah, role. Sam, I mean, come great. on, come on. Yeah, he's great. John Goodman is even pretty good at it. Tom Hiddleston and um, what's her name? Brie Larson. It's funny mm -hmm. to see all these Marvel actors yeah. reuniting and be yeah. like this. Um, but yeah, between her and Sam Jackson and Tom Hiddleston, um, th their characters are both pretty one note. Like, oh, they're supposed to be the attractive main guy and main girl. Sure. And there's no like love. There's no like romantic storyline really. Um, but they're they're much less fun than well at least tom hiddleston at least is much less fun than his marvel superhero mm. loki loki <laughs> performance um because he's he's kind of just like this downtrodden tracker who's drinking himself into oblivion before they pull him out of the gutter to come help track that you know what i mean it's that sure. he's that kind of character it yeah. reminds me a lot of when chris pratt was in that first jurassic world movie where okay he's not he's not super fun he's, he's fine but he's just kind of the cool guy yeah, I thought. Well, he's like the cool like wrangler of raptors, which I mean is cool. <laughs> but he's not he's but... not Andy or Star Lord. Like he's not oh, doing his normal sure. fun stuff. No one's Andy. Um, no one's, no Andy. one's Andy. Um, so yeah, I would say as long as you temper those expectations, because the cast looks phenomenal. But really, the, the main human performances that were fun were John C. Riley and mm. and Samuel L. Jackson was pretty fun. Yeah, uh, and a couple a couple others. They're not bad. Um, but anyway, that movie is probably my favorite until this one maybe i might like this one more but that one was my favorite. it's also set in the 70s so it's a younger kong he's not quite as big as he gets in this one okay oh so um, gotcha yeah so it's a little bit of it's not origin story because he's not a baby like he's probably more of an adolescent and he's just mm -hmm. not full size yet and they mentioned that in this movie they're like yeah he's not stopping growing so they kind of slip that in there as an as an explanation as to how is he gonna ever fight godzilla godzilla's way bigger and so right. they just kind of slip in this little comment about like yeah he's been growing this whole time Wasn't it like the nuclear sort of 
there's some sort of nuclear aspect, right? Is that what it is, or uh, not like a human created one? But yeah, no? okay, yeah, gotcha. Because I mean, that's why Godzilla is so much bigger, right? There's some sort of radiation, right. nuclear kind of aspect to it. So, I mean, he yeah. literally like, dude, <laughs> in in that first new Godzilla movie, where is it Mothra that's in that one? Yeah. And mm-hmm. he literally just fires his nuclear breath down. He's holding its mouth open and fires the nuclear. That scene is like, it still gives me like goosebumps. Like it's that scene is so awesome. Just right down his throat. Like Jesus. Wait, Mothra is the good guy. Is it? So Mothra's whatever, whatever he's good. fighting in, in that, in that Godzilla movie, whatever the hell that ends up there, there, there's two of them at the very end. Spoiler. Oh, you're talking about the 2014 Godzilla movie, yes. not the King yeah. of the Monsters. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I forget what those are called. Yeah, because actually, yeah, Mothra is like the butterfly thing that's like actually... Yeah, Moth- yeah Mothra him. is, right, kind of yeah, the healing yeah. titan um, or whatever. But yeah, whatever whatever the hell he's fighting in that one, and then there ends up being, yeah, and and he just like fires his nuclear breath down its throat, like holding its mouth wide open, like, yep. that's hilarious. Yeah, it, this does definitely doesn't have the Royal Rumble, here come all the monsters vibe to it, but... Okay. I mean, it's not supposed to. It's a bummer, Tim. It's not supposed to have all the other (laughs) Titans joining in. Sure. No. Sure, sure. I mean, this is about Godzilla and King Kong, right? I mean, I mean, to be fair, King of the Monsters didn't feature those other ones outside of the pterodactyl and Mothra. There was really no other monsters really engaging in cool battles. It was like well, right, but they like they were showing up though. They were showing, and they show up at the end after things are kind of resolved to bow down or whatever. So I I thought that would have been cool to see some of them in action. Like the giant mammoth. Like, what's he going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Those are fun movies. Yeah, I recommend this one. I think this is a good popcorn flick. It's really fun. And uh, sometimes it's good to watch something dumb. And and I don't mean dumb because it's not a good movie. I mean, like, you don't need to think yeah. about this one a lot. Right. Don't yeah, worry yeah. about the logistics and if it's realistic and would that character do that? Who cares? People Who cares? are still going to do that. Though, too. <laughs> I They're know. always going to do that. There's always got to be some logic to these movies. It's like there's no such thing as sitting down and just enjoying the, the visual spectacle of it all. You That's know? all it is. It's a visual like, spectacle with some fun writing, not bad performances. Yeah. And it's good. It's good. You know what has great writing, Tim, and is also amazing? Just real quick, Man of Steel. <laughs> that yeah, movie. It's dude, all right. I, I don't know. Listen, that movie is completely underrated. It 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 grosses me out how underrated it is. That's a fantastic <laughs> movie, all right? I'm, I'm going to throw up. It's so underrated. I'm not gonna, I mean, like, I love Marvel way more than DC, but, like, that yeah. movie is not a bad movie whatsoever. And people no, act like it is. It's like, not a bad movie. I don't know. I don't know if everyone just kind of has made the whole thing like be like these are bad movies because people really hated like Batman v Superman, but like I think some people have. Listen, th- yeah. you have to admit the turn in Batman v Superman when they finally go, "Wait, our moms have the same name? Let's be friends." <laughs> like that was one of the dumbest moments in any comic book movie. I mean, that being said, it doesn't mean that that entire movie is bad. I just thought that that pivotal moment that they turned things and I rewatched it a while back to be like, did I misremember this? Nope, that's really it. That, that's the moment where they finally kind of see eye to eye. It's so frustrating. <laughs> but that's not the whole the whole movie. Batman v Superman, also not the worst movie. Like, There's some sure. good and entertaining moments. Man of Steel is way better than that. Man of Steel is better than a good chunk of the Marvel standalone flicks. I just don't think it stands up to their best ones. Like, I oh, would yeah, still no, like it. I, mean, I would sure. still like it over some of their... Like some of the Iron Man sequels, I didn't think were very good. Like I would right. like man, I would right. rank Man of Steel above some of them, yeah. probably above. Uh, oh, some of the Thor, the two, both of the Thor sequels were bad. No, no, no. Ragnarok well, was good. Ragnarok it was is, just yeah. Dark Dark World that was bad. And the yeah. original one was fine. And then yeah, Dark World. I mean, I think if you went back and like kind of watched it all together, it's it's still not like the worst movie ever. But like right. it's it's a it's one of the weaker Marvel, you know, movies for sure. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. Man of Steel is not bad I, as far as Superman movies go. And there aren't that many of them. They came in these yeah. weird kind of like waves of um, almost like generational waves. So if you go yeah, way yeah. back to like Christopher Reeve day or you watch the one off Brandon Ruth one yeah, yeah. Um, and that that very much had a kind of mid 2000s vibe to it. It just it felt did. very yeah. different. And then now Man of Steel feels yeah. even more different. So, yeah, I um, 
I don't I don't know why people like this the whole darker tone of these movies like I like it and I especially like it too because like Marvel is definitely sort of overall the opposite like they try to add a bit more humor overall in their movies um whereas like this this like Snyder verse is more serious like I'm completely fine with that because like yeah. I mean Superman's fighting Zod and his and his goons and and just like f- flying through buildings decimating an entire city thousands of people are dying like there's nothing to laugh about here <laughs> like yeah. this is this is actually serious like yeah so you know and yeah and the, the fighting the fighting is basically like live action Dragon Ball Z like and it's amazing like yeah just it visually looks really cool just how fast they're kind of moving around and pu- the punching and um the mu- dude the music in that movie is fantastic the soundtrack yeah. is is really yeah really that's another one that i think is on hbo max right yeah I well is. i yeah i had rewatched it yeah oh, okay. it was on right. HBO. Yeah, yeah. Yep. so yeah well there you go uh, there's your movie corner with tim and dan yeah. <laughs> exactly all right well i think that does it for us this week uh sorry to uh to derek that we don't know what's going on with you uh but we want you back on the show I mean, so i know what's back. going wrong with him he's a pain <laughs> in the ass that's what's no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we want you back we need your hot takes we actually do want to hear about outriders and lord knows neither of us are probably going to play it so no, we need your take not. on that one yeah. um but uh yeah over the next few weeks we do have some pretty major releases coming out i think next week we'll kind of touch base a little bit on some upcoming games because it's been a little while since we've looked at what's on the horizon because i've been just kind of enjoying stuff that's currently out whether it's older stuff um or some of the more recent releases that maybe aren't for everybody monster hunter rises and for everybody but it's certainly doing it for me so just waiting for resident evil village tim yeah just, about one month wait. away just over a month patiently yep 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 so all right dan thanks man thanks for taking time thank you listeners for checking in with us and uh we'll talk to you next time peace